you are about to watch is the recent Warrior Nation virtual forum on the COVID-19 vaccine. We attempted to just give the facts about the vaccine and our local medical professionals on our panel tried to answer the questions from our audience as honestly and clearly as possible. Please enjoy. Members of this panel include Nurse Jesse Simmons, Celine DeSalvo, Josh Ferguson, myself, and um, Dr. Faith Polke. Um, nurse Simmons is the school nurse here at Well Branch Early College High School. Most of you would know her. She's been here for the last three years. Um, she's also worked as a licensed practical nurse here in the Low Country for um, over 20 years. All right, um, Celine DeSalvo is a health, the health science teacher here at Well Branch for the last year and a half. Um, but she has she is also a registered nurse uh, with over 35 years of experience. Um, I myself have been a teacher here for four years now, I'm teaching sports medicine and health science. And I also have over 15 years of experience as a certified athletic trainer here in the district. Um, I worked uh, with various schools here in the district, um, taking care of athletes and keeping them healthy and, and, and helping with that. Um, Dr. Faith Polke um, is a pediatrician with Beaufort Jasper Hampton Comprehensive Health Services, and she's been there since 2002 um, and currently serves there as the chief clinical officer um, she is also the Regional Director of Medical Education for A.T. Still University School of Osteopathic Medicine in Arizona, who has a South Carolina campus here um, embedded with their health center. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of uh, let each one of them introduce a little bit about themselves, uh, what schools they went to, what schools they graduated from, and something that's interesting to them might be interesting to you. Um, and we'll start with Nurse Simmons. Put you right on the spot there. Oh, wow. I got to go first. Yep. I am a product of the community, born and raised, built for South Carolina, class of 88, graduate of Battery Creek High School. Uh, U.S. Navy veteran, limestone graduate, TCL graduate. I've been nursing over 20-something years. Uh, a lot of the students and the community members know I like to laugh. I like to help everybody. I love the shop, and the COVID has stopped me from doing this traveling. So I'm ready to get back traveling, and I'm ready for my kids to come back to school. And that's, that's all about me. That's it. All right. <laughs> Um, Nurse uh, DeSalvo, I will take over before you letting people in if you want to tell folks a little bit about yourself. Um, sure. Um, my name is Celine DeSalvo. Um, I've been a registered nurse for over 35 years. I'm not going to tell you exactly how many years, but over 35 years. Um, I graduated from a diploma school back in the day many years ago, went back and got my BSN years later. Um, I've worked critical care. Most of my nursing career was critical care, um, mostly cardiology. I did some home care. Um, I moved to the low country about two and a half years ago. I worked for a short time at Beaufort Memorial Hospital before um, joining the Whale Branch community. Um, I love it here. I feel like I was meant to teach the next generation of uh, nursing students. Um, and something interesting about myself, let me see, I love to play pickleball. Um, that's become a new fascination of mine since I've moved down here. And um, I love the beach, I love the low country. And uh, what else can I say? That's it for awesome. me. Sounds Thanks. great. All right, Dr. Polke, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hey everybody, my name is Faith Polke. I am originally from Charleston, South Carolina. I went to R.B. Stahl High School um, and then uh, USC for undergraduate. Um, I did medical school at Johns Hopkins and then came back to the South to do my pediatric residency and then preventive medicine and public health. So um, you know, big background in public health. I've been here in Beaufort for 19 years. Um, I may have seen some of you as a pediatrician at Port Royal Medical Center, but most of you are probably familiar with 
Ms. Allison Jackson, who is the nurse practitioner who comes to your school and is at your school-based health uh, program. And then Dr. Jamie Singleton and Marlo Smith are the pediatricians who are at Port Royal now. And something interesting about me, I once sang on the radio to get tickets, front row seat tickets to Prince concert. So, that's, you know. That's what I'm talking about. Gotta love some Prince. That's right. Rest in peace, rest right. in peace. All right. little, little red Corvette. All right, so, um, and a little bit of myself. Um, again, I'm Mr. Ferguson. Um, I've been teaching here at Well Branch for four years now. I was an athletic trainer at Beaufort High School before that for over 12 years. Um, I have literally only had two jobs since I graduated high school. I worked at Beaufort High and then here. So I've known Miss Dixon for a long time since my Beaufort High days. Um, and that's why I ultimately ended up here. So um, I graduated from the University of Georgia in 2005. Go dogs! Don't want to hear nothing. Nobody say nothing. All right. Um, and uh, a little bit about myself. I thoroughly enjoy obstacle course racing. I have missed it for the past year and a half um, due to COVID, but um, hopefully planning on getting back into it here soon. All right, we are going to get started. We're going to jump right on in. I had you guys, um, a good portion of you guys did a survey for me a few weeks back um, that was of great help and uh, to me and to this panel as to what questions we might get asked and what questions we definitely want to address here um, during this time. And uh, I saw that most of your concerns as a student body was, uh, is the vaccine safe, all right? And what type of side effects, that you were worried about side effects from the vaccine, all right? So we are going to tackle those questions first and foremost, and then we're gonna open it up to questions from, um, from, from you guys. All right, so um, I got Dr. Faith Polke is going to talk a little bit about the steps, what it looks like, um, what the steps are to develop a vaccine in a normal case, and why this one was a little bit different, because a lot of you are worried that, you know, it was developed so fast um, that the science, you know, they're, they're worried that it's not going to be safe. All right, so we wanted to tackle how is it that we came to this vaccine so quickly um, and what opportunities availed itself to allow us to get that, allow that to happen for us. So Dr. Polke is going to tackle that first for me. And we uh, have a little, um, got a little presentation made for it. And I'm going to click through it as she talks about it. All right. Everybody see that? Yes. All right. Okay. So I know everybody's like, all right, this vaccine came up too quick. Um, it's too fast. How did they get this so, so quickly? Um, quick little background on how vaccines are developed. You've got all these stages. So there's a preclinical stage. So people come up with, you know, a vaccine and scientists in a lab decide, um, you know, I want to vaccinate against smallpox. I want to vaccinate against the flu. And they try to look for ways in which, um, what's the best way for the body to be able to respond to this vaccine? Because a vaccine is just, is acting like the actual virus or bacteria that enters your body and your body's response to that. So it's kind of tricking it into having an immune reaction. Well, they've got all these phases. So they've got preclinical -pre phases where they do some testing, sometimes on animals, sometimes just what they call in vitro in a test tube to see if you get an immune response. Then phase one, they give it to a small amount of people just to see people tolerate it. Phase two is for checking for safety. So that's the big phase where they wanna look at safety, side effects, how does the immune response happen? And then what dose is the best dose? Phase three is the one that most of us think of. That's the one where you give it to thousands of people and you wanna see you know, how effective it is. And you're also monitoring for safety. And then after that, you have your implementation phase, okay? So we can go to the next one. Um, so for this vaccine, 
Um, normally, if you look at that long, um, you know, 2020 to 2040, it takes a lot of times 10, 15 or more years for a vaccine to be developed. So normally you've got research, then you've got that preclinical phase that might take two or three years, then phase one trials, phase two, phase three, and then you have to build factories, right? So, you know, the pharmaceutical companies have to be able to produce these things. And then you have manufacturers and then you get approval by the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, and then it's distributed. Well, all of these phases happened all at once. This is the first time this has ever happened. You had, people had already been re researching it. So they had the research. These vaccines, um, the mRNA vaccines, which are the Pfizer and the Moderna, had already been in the pipeline for years, 10 years on mRNA, and specifically for the, the ones that they were using about five years. So that was already in the hopper. They just didn't have the, the, the urgency and the funding to be able to do this. And so they did all the trials at the same time. And manufacturers said, we're gonna go ahead and produce this product that you have, hoping that these trials last, uh, these trials came out and that they were effective. So this was all kind of a, um, it was a little bit of a leap of faith, but it was also out of necessity because people were dying all around the world. So the scientists said, we got you. We got these vaccines, it's gonna work. We just need you to put it in production. And that's what they did. And so that's why the timeline was just shrunk. But all the phases that normally happen, happened. We can go to the next one. So yeah, no steps or skip. I wanna just highlight somebody, Kismikia Corbett. Some of you may have learned about her. She's an immunologist. She was at the National Institutes of Health. Uh, she's been there, I think for five or six years, PhD. But she was one of the people who helped collaborate on the Moderna vaccine. So it was her lab that built out the mRNA vaccine that went into the Moderna vaccine. Um, and some of you may have seen her, she's great. Like if you follow her on social media, she's really funny, uh, but she gives you the facts, definitely the facts about it. Um, next slide. And then this one just talks about safety. So people worried about safety. Again, they're following that as we go along. Um, there's be safe, so people who've gotten the vaccine already once you get the vaccine, you can sign up so that they, the CDC will monitor you and how you're doing. And they give you these, they send you a text message. So the day after you get your vaccine and they ask you about side effects. And this is one of the ways that they're trying to monitor um, the safety of the vaccine as we go along. Again, this is all happening in real time. So um, although they've already studied it and a whole lot of people, of course, we're waiting for kind of those longer term um, effects you want to see if there's something that's going to happen longer term. And I know that's what people are concerned about. Um, and then there's VAERS, B-A-E-R-S, which is the Vaccine Adverse Event um, Reaction System or something like that. But it's basically where people can call in and um, say any side effect that they're having, and then uh, the CDC will um, investigate that. So that's basically it in a nutshell. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so basically what we want you to get from that, guys, is that there were no steps that were skipped in making this vaccine. All the steps um, were taken that needed to be taken. Um, and uh, they have done a vast amount of research and they had a vast amount of money that was available to them that they are not normally do not normally have available to them. Pre-existing factories were used in the manufacturing of this uh, vaccine. They didn't have to build the factories from scratch. All right, they, um, and like I said, they had unlimited funding from governments. <laughs> Please be careful and watch, watch your mute button there, folks. Um, they had unlimited amounts of money. You had countries working together, sharing information. Um, an unprecedented amount of people working together on this to make sure that it was safe um, and make sure that it's effective. All right. Um, for the side effects, um, so one question that we had was about side effects. So what are the side effects and how long do they last? Um, Nurse uh, DeSalvo, do you want to take that for me? 
Um, sure. Um, there are some common side effects. You'll let people in. Uh, common side effects would be uh, pain, redness, and swelling. And this is all at the injection site. So um, if you have it in your left arm, that's where your side effects are going to be. Um, and it's not actually pain from the injection itself because the um, needle that they use actually for the vaccination, it's just tiny, 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 very small. So the shot itself does not hurt at all. Um, the medication could cause pain, redness, swelling at the injection. Um, other side effects that you may experience, and this may occur sometimes as late as the next day, could be things like feeling very fatigued, headache, muscle pain at the injection site, chills, fever, nausea. Um, that's with the first, infect, uh, first vaccination. And sometimes these symptoms could be a little bit worse with the second vaccination. And the reason for that is your body is, um, these are normal reactions, and it's your body building the protection that it needs to fight the virus. So that's why some people may experience some of these symptoms a little bit worse um, with the second vaccination. Um, but typically, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Polkey, um, they don't last longer than a few days. Right, yeah, 24, 48 hours, usually people are feeling a lot better. <laughs> And I did read somewhere where um, that only about 25% of people will have anything more than soreness of the arm. And typically that, that extra symptom is, is a headache or they might have a slight fever. I've, had, I've talked to a, a few people that, a, a couple people that had a slight fever for literally an hour or two. And then their, their symptoms, those, those symptoms were gone. I can tell um, I was personally, I was fine with the first. I ended up with chills with my second vaccination. The next day, I had it on a Friday. The next day, I had chills. I took my temperature. I had a little low-grade fever. Um, I took Tylenol, took a nap, and woke up 30 minutes later and felt absolutely fine. So it was very short-lived. All right. Awesome. All right. I can say from my personal experiences, I'll, my only symptom with both shots was a sore arm. Um, I did have COVID um, back in January, and we'll talk about, a little bit about that, whether you still need the vaccine here in a little bit. Um, but we want to go ahead and open it up to your questions here um, for the panel. Um, you can direct them to a specific person, or you can direct them to the panner, panel, and um, I, I'll divvy that out. Um, we do have one question in the chat already. At, um, do we have to get the vaccine for the 2021-22 school year? Um, Nurse Simmons, you want to you want to take that one right there? Yes, I'll take that one. Newport County School District is following CDC guidelines according to immunizations, and the COVID vaccine is considered one of the immunizations, but it's not required yet for the school year for next year. It is not one of the required immunizations that you need to attend school for the 21-22 school year, okay? And as soon as I find out when it becomes becomes required, uh, we'll pass on the message to all the students and parents and staff. All right. All right. One question. All right. Um, if this is safe, then why are people getting blood clots and other serious side effects? All right, we'll answer that question first. Um, Dr. Polke, do you want to take on that? And I can chime in as well. Right, so one of the vaccines, um, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, um, people might have heard in the news, was associated with some blood clots in women aged 18 to 49. It was not seen in older women and not seen in men. And it was a really rare side effect. It was like seven people out of a million. Um, they, they're they still kind of studying why that happened, but that was just for the Johnson & Johnson. That was not a side effect that was seen with Moderna or the Pfizer vaccine at this time. So, um, right. I think it was, I think it was seven people in, in like six million doses. Yes. Um, and you, t you have more of a chance of blood clots. It, you can stop me if I'm wrong, Dr. Polke, um, with taking birth control or um, other medications. Or COVID. Um, 
COVID well, actually, well, one of the big side effects of COVID are blood clots. And so um, we actually put people on blood thinners once they get COVID, especially if they've been admitted to the hospital uh, with COVID. So um, that is a side effect of that. Obviously. So um, that was a good question. All right. Also asked uh, um, if the vaccine is supposed to be effective and help prevent COVID, COVID, why are people still getting the virus after the vaccine? All right. Um, for me, all right, um, I can kind of chime in here. All right. The, the vaccines, the uh, Pfizer and Moderna, are, have been shown to be about 95% effective at, um, you can still get COVID, but 95% of people um, will be asymptomatic, won't have symptoms. Um, and another 5% might have symptoms, but they're typically, but it is 100% effective at um, preventing hospitalizations or severe symptoms. Um, so anybody want to add on to that? Yeah, so they're finding that, you know, that 95%, like in the real world, right? So up to 95% actually don't get COVID at all, like asymptomatic or symptomatic. There are some people who can get asymptomatic carriage, but it's really low at this point. And so that's where this kind of real world efficacy is coming out. So it's really, really effective. No vaccine is 100% effective, none. Like the flu shot you get every year, that's why there's breakthrough flu every year, right? Because none of it is 100% effective. We'd like it to be, um, but that just isn't the case, even for other childhood vaccines. This one's pretty good though for something that's an infectious disease. Um, and like Mr. Ferguson said, it's 100% effective at preventing hospitalization, well, death, death, the big one, which is what our concern is. A lot of people have died, 600 million people, 600,000 people have died, right? Um, so it prevents that and also prevents people from getting in the hospital. So that's the scary part about this. For most people, you know, COVID, they do okay. And it's it's like a bad cold or a stomach virus or they get a fever, but it's that subset of people that for whom it's deadly. And that's what we're trying to prevent because we can't, you can pre predict some of them, people with certain risk factors, but then there's some people you can't predict it for. Um, so we wanna prevent that. Awesome. Um, Somebody asked, why would it be important to get vaccinated? I feel like that was just kind of covered. Um, we're, we're not trying to just protect ourselves. We are trying to protect others, especially those that are at higher risk for developing serious symptoms um, from this virus. Um, we have to look at it as a community. Um, it, it's not all about us as much as sometimes we want to make it about us. Um, especially though you, you young people will probably, I mean, percentage wise, you are more likely going to be just fine if you were to get COVID. The problem is if you were to spread it to your grandmother or your grandfather or um, some of your older re relatives, um, that's where we would see um, uh, why it would be important. Um, all right, I see. Everybody who took the vaccine was really tired. Why is that? Anybody want to take that one? I'll, I'll say that's your body working. That's your immune system saying, hey, I think I have the virus. Let me go kill it. And a part of those, those immune system cells that come in to kind of see what's going on and to kill a virus, they release all kinds of things that will make it uh, not a good place for a virus to thrive. So it releases these chemicals that that's what causes you to have fever. Um, that's what sometimes causes you to have a runny nose. So all the kind of side effects, all the symptoms you have from a virus are the result of your body trying to fight that virus off. So because we're kind of making your body think it's infected, that's why you get some of those side effects. All right. Um, I'm assuming this question is talking about the vex, well, vaccine or it could be talking about COVID. How does it affect people with asthma? 
Um, if we're talking about the vaccine, the vaccine won't affect anyone with asthma. Um, if you're talking about COVID, obviously those with asthma, I would assume Dr. Folke, um, are going to be at, at a higher risk for more severe symptoms. Absolutely. Yes, in, in children, um, the highest risk people, uh, and this study actually just came out, so people with type 1 diabetes, also children who are obese, and then children with asthma are at most risk for hospitalizations and for death. So um, people who have asthma are at high risk. Um, I'll just tell you personally, my, my son goes to a, a different high school, so Hopefully he won't see this, but um, in any case, he's 15. He just got his first Pfizer vaccine um, and has asthma. And that was part of the reason why he wanted to get it because he was concerned about um, himself being high risk. And he also wanted, you know, to, to, to have a little more freedom and to feel a little more safe. All right, I have somebody asking about infertility and the vaccine. Um, this was a hot button issue that came out, and I'll just say that this was a, it all started because of a Facebook post that was not very well researched. Um, and uh, if somebody wants to, to take on this one, uh, I can chime in as well. I didn't see any evidence on that, of that in any of the CDC research that I did. Dr. Polky, I don't know if you have any. I mean, yeah. I saw that on Facebook too, and it was kind of disturbing, but um, I'm looking at the pre-vaccination checklist and they actually, it's available for pregnant women and they recommend it for pregnant women. So um, as far as I know, that was just one of those myths. Absolutely. And it's one that's per persistent and it's one that people get worried about with any new anything. People just worry about, well, how will this affect my fertility? Um, but there's not been any um, connection to infertility at all. And yes, I mean, I have, we vaccinate at our, our health center and we've given it to pregnant women as well as breastfeeding women. Actually in breastfeeding women, um, the antibodies that you make are actually passed to the baby. So it actually can be beneficial. Um, I believe what I read, and not trying to get too technical for you guys, but basically they were saying in this Facebook post that the spike protein that the, vi the vaccine attacks is very similar to one used for pregnancy. And the spike proteins are very distinct, very different. Um, and they're literally, there's nothing to worry about. Over, I think, 23 women during the Pfizer clinical trials, all got pregnant. Um, only one had uh, any complications and she was in the placebo group, which means she was not getting the vaccine. So, um, so, all right, so I think this question is getting to, um, can the vaccine give you COVID-19? I think is what the uh, question is getting to. I was actually waiting for this question, so I'll answer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, it cannot. It is impossible. So I'm gonna just give y'all a little, a, a little, a little primer on RNA vaccines. So mRNA, the ones that it's the Pfizer and Moderna. Um, the vaccine, it has four components. It has messenger RNA, which is like a little strip of proteins that tell your body to make spike protein. Then it has some salt, it has some sugars, and it has a fat, a lipid, okay, science class, right? It's got a lipid layer. And that lipid layer is what allows your cell to kind of let the RNA in. So when the RNA gets in your cell cytoplasm, y'all, <laughs> Um, it doesn't go to your nucleus, so it can't get your DNA. It's not going to alter your DNA. Um, when it gets in the cytoplasm, it's red, and it's told, it tells your cells, make spike protein. So you make a spike protein. Spike protein is presented on the surface of your cell, and then your immune system goes, oh, that's not supposed to be there. Hold up. Let me kill you, you know, and, and, and it creates a reaction to it. 
Now, people wonder about what happens to that RNA, that messenger RNA. It's kind of like Snapchat. It's got a time limit. So once your body says, oh, that's not supposed to be there either, it eats it up too, and it's gone. What's not gone, like Snapchat, is that message, right? Somebody did a screen grab, right? So it's out there on the internet. That's what your immune system is doing. Your immune system's like, oh, no, that's not supposed to be there. So if it sees COVID again, it kills it before it can cause disease. Um, and it create, and the reason why you need that second shot is because it boosts that immune response. So you've got some other cells, your T cells and B cells that have memory. So that when those antibodies go away, these cells say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm still here. I remember what you look like. Johnson & Johnson is a little different. Um, and this gives some people cause, but we have used this type of thing. It's, it's a virus. So it's an adenovirus that has been basically made so it doesn't act like a virus. Viruses usually enter your cells and make you produce more virus. Well, this adenovirus can't do that. It is just the messenger, kind of like that lipoprotein that goes to the cell. The difference is this is a DNA that they insert and it does go to your nucleus, but it cannot incorporate into your DNA. It is just another message that tells your body, make spike protein, spike protein goes to the surface and the same thing happens. So it is impossible. It is not the virus that you're getting, it's no coronavirus. It's impossible for it to incorporate in your DNA and impossible for it to cause coronavirus. That's it. Great. Somebody was asking, we kind of covered this already about the J&J, &J, people talking about the safety issues with J&J. &J. We've already discussed that as uh, it was blood clots. It was very few in number. Um, you're actually at higher risk of getting blood clots um, and dying from COVID or getting blood clots from um, uh, a birth control or other medications. Um, there's conspiracy theory. Oh, I've been waiting on this one. Um, conspiracy theory that there are microchips in the vaccine. Should we have, should we be worried about that or not? Um, I will say if the government wants to know where you guys are, all they got to do is look up your phone. Okay, Fine. they do not need to put in a chip inside of you. <laughs> all right, there has been there is no chip in the any of the vaccines. No one is is if they want to spy on you, all they got to do is look at your phone, and they know what you're interested in, what you're doing, and where you are at all times. If you're worried about Big Brothers, you might need to put that phone down. All right, um, moving right along. Um, Will we have to wear a mask in school, even though Beaufort County says it isn't mandatory? I'm assuming they mean for next year. Um, Nurse Simmons, you want to take that question? Yes, I'll take that one. Um, when the governor announced that there was going to be no more masks in school, they had to kind of hurry up with the heck to get a permission slip. Um, next year, we're still going to be taking the permission slip because we have other students might be at risk, we might have other staff who may be at risk. One of the things that we have found with COVID, with the vaccine, is that the HIPAA loss will stain. We cannot ask you if you had been vaccinated. So in order to keep everyone safe, to keep everyone healthy at uh, well Branch, what we're gonna do is we're gonna still keep the mask. But if you or your parent wants you to opt out of not wearing a mask, I will have to have a copy of the DHEC uh, permission slip saying that your parents give you the right not to wear your mask. And it's also like a liability issue because 90 days everybody is so happy. And if there's something that can be prevented, that's what our permission slip is there for. Uh, we've sent out the bright arrow. Ms. Dixon has sent out emails. We have sent out numerous messages. Um, if you don't want to wear the mask, your parents have to sign that and have to turn it in before you enter the building, the building without a mask. All right. Um, a couple of questions I'm just going to hit real fast. Um, 
hearing that the vaccine makes people crazy. Is that true? We've talked about what the normal side effects are for these vaccines. Um, for the majority of people, it is a sore arm. Okay, a small percentage of people might develop other symptoms like a headache, might have a, a slight a mild fever response, um, but that typically does not last very long. Um, somebody asking, did we say that the vaccine stops birth control? We did not. It Birth control will still work. Um, All right, if we are supposed to reach herd immunity soon, and if masks are effective, is it really necessary to get the vaccine? All right, that's a thoughtful question. Somebody would like to tackle that. In order to reach herd immunity, we either need to have more people convert because they've had the disease, because they've had the coronavirus, or uh, we need to reach, are they saying 50 to 70% vaccination? So we're not going to reach herd immunity unless everybody gets sick if we don't have use the vaccination. So we're trying to uh, the vaccination will help us reach herd immunity is what I'm saying. Right. So Thank herd immunity typically, um, I think they've, they've are saying they want, I mean, for the vaccine and everything to be effective for us to stay safe. They were saying 75 to 85% of the public needs to get the vaccine or have had the virus. The problem with, the virus, and we're still doing research on how long the vaccines work, but um, some initial studies have shown that even if you get COVID, doesn't mean you can't ever get it again. Um, They're showing that your immunity for after having COVID sometimes can be as short as two or three months, um, and then you could be at risk of getting it again, all right? Um, so that's why even like myself, I had COVID in January, but I went ahead and got the vaccine as well because I wanted to protect myself for a longer period of time. We, at this moment in time, the only thing we don't know about this vaccine is how long it's going to last. And that's because we've got to continue to do research on it. Um, so we don't know if it's going to last a year. We don't know if it's going to last 10 years. We just, we don't know that yet because we haven't been studying it. For long enough. All right. And I was just um, going to say real yep. quick, um, just talk to the, the assistant state epidemiologist came and gave us a talk this morning and um, was saying a similar thing. We don't know how long it lasts at this point, but it does last longer than that natural, um, you know, getting COVID. And that's why getting the vaccine after you've had COVID is important because it's that immune response, those B and T cells, those memory cells um, are the things that are going to really kick in um, later on. So, you know, she was saying probably last longer than your immunity from COVID, maybe last longer than a flu shot, but maybe not as long as a tetanus shot, which is 10 years. And then I want to say one other thing just about um, uh, why not just get COVID. Part of it is because a lot of people die. So if we let everybody, 300 million people get COVID, right? And let's say the death rate's 1%, which is what it was, you know, in the early days. That's 3 million people dead. Might not be you, but it could be because of you, because you went to your family reunion and you were good, but there was somebody who was vulnerable there. And I think that's where that kind of responsibility to each other comes in, because I might be okay. But what does that do to somebody else? And I mean, I think that's just the whole push of, of, of why. So again, we got somebody asking, will we have to receive the vaccination every year? And that's what we were just talking about. We're still coming to the studies. They're talking about uh, uh, getting a booster next year for some of the variants, perhaps. Um, but for the most part, we don't know yet how long the vaccination lasts. Um, and that question will, will rely on the research. 
All right. Um, skimming through these. There's a lot of questions in here. We are running short on time. All right. I'm gonna. We're gonna try and hit as many of these as possible. All right. Um, uh, yes, Pfizer is the only vaccine vaccine that is available to your age group at this time. Um, it um, has also shown um, the greatest efficacy in uh, preventing COVID and preventing hospitalizations, um, but is the only one that has officially been approved for ages 12 through 18, correct, mm -hmm. Dr. Polk? Yes. Um, Uh, um, will students be required to go back to school next year? Um, <laughs> this might be more of a question for Doc, for Ms. Dixon, but I, I'm pretty sure we are going to be um, in person <laughs> fully next year. Um, She's at, nodding yes. <laughs> yes, she is nodding yes and giving me the thumbs up. So. Um, I do not know what a virtual option might look like for some people that might need it. Um, but as of right now, we are probably more than certainly looking at 100% in-person school next year. Can I just add to um, Mr. Ferguson, um, with this vaccination, with the Pfizer vaccination, it's 12 and older, and when I looked at the cdc.gov website, it brought you to, you could click on COVID. There was like a blue area for COVID. You click on that, and then it brought you right to vaccine.com. And when you go into that site, you just put in your zip code. And what's really nice about that now is it pulls up all the area pharmacies or stores that have the vaccination. So I just was specifically looking for five. Um, and it's available at Walmart on Robert Small. It is not available at the Walmart on Ladies Island. They've only got the other one. Um, and at this point, it's so readily available, you could just walk in during pharmacy hours and get the vaccination. So it's become more readily available, and it's not like when the vaccine first came out. It's just much easier to get. And if you go to the vaccine.com site, you could find out exactly where the Pfizer is available. Great. All right. We're going to rapid fire. We're going to try and hit through these as much as, as quickly as possible. Somebody's asking about the vaccine and allergic reactions. Um, do you want to take that on, Dr. Polke? Right. So uh, the only allergic reaction, the only contraindication, which means you can't get the vaccine, is if you had a reaction to any components in the vaccine. And they screen you for that. Um, it's pretty rare that people have had uh, a reaction to any of the components. If you do have, say, severe allergies, um, sometimes we suggest you getting it more in a hospital setting versus like a drive through vaccine. Um, and that's not, uh, this is like, have you ever had anaphylaxis? Your throat closed up, you got a rash, you got hives, that kind of thing. If that happens, then we might be more cautious. But otherwise, there are no contraindications. Anybody can get it. Doesn't matter what medical problems you have, uh, anything. Awesome. Um, All right, Dr. P with the info, vaccination is better than getting sick because more people getting sick creates more opportunity for the virus to mutate and find ways around the vaccine. All right, the way we can tackle this, the quicker we can tackle it, the better off we're gonna be in the long run, okay? Um, where can you get your vaccines? Where can you get the vaccines? All right, so just like Ms. DeSalvo just said, if you go to, it's vaccine.gov, I believe, and then um, DHEC is vaxlocator.dhec.sc.gov. Um, but if you just Google where to get the vaccine, it'll find right. it. Here in Beaufort, go ahead, sorry. You can just go to the CDC site as well. CDC. Yeah. Um, and there's in links that'll bring you right there. You just put in your zip code and it brought up a list of 10 different places that I could get it within 25 miles. Um, and then you click into, if you go into Walgreens, then you have to go into the Walgreens site and do the pre-vaccination checklist. All right, how long does it take for the vaccine to be fully effective? Yes, 
You want me to take that one? Um, it's two weeks after your second vaccination. So if you get the Pfizer vaccine, you get the second one 21 days later. So that's three weeks. And then two weeks after that, you'll be fully vaccinated. So, so somebody can correct me. Sorry. So somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. Typically after the first shot, you get somewhere around 50% humidity. I'll say my, um, me and both my daughters had COVID af um, after my wife had gotten the first shot. Um, and she never, she got tested five times because she works at the hospital and she never contracted COVID. Um, she got her second shot the same week I was diagnosed that I, the, the test came positive. So, um, it is very effective early, but it's fully effective to that 95% efficacy, um, two weeks following your second dose. All right. Also, uh, Mr. Ferguson, can you hear me? Yep. Also, with the vaccine, the piggyback off of what Ms. D said about where you go to get the vaccine. I know this summer, even though we say be careful traveling, you might travel, you might get your first vaccine in Buford, think you got to come back to get your second vaccine. You don't. As long as you have your vaccine card, you register through CDC. Uh, it doesn't matter if you got it at CVS, Walgreens, Rite Aid. If there's a Walgreens, Rite Aid, or CVS in the area or the state that you're visiting, the pharmacy can pull up your first shot and go ahead and administer your second shot free of charge. There's no charge for the vaccine. There's, they're going to ask you for an insurance card for um, identification purposes. But you do not have to return back to that first place that you had your vaccine. So if you're not right. three weeks, you can go anywhere as long as you already registered and in their system. That's perfect. You read my next question. Somebody was asking if I get the first dose in Beaufort, can I get the second dose? Do I have to get the second dose here as well? And no. that, that answered it for you. Um, and that has changed. That has changed. In the beginning, they were really kind of pushing people to go back to where they got it from. But now vaccine is readily available. Um, we have vaccine at Beaufort, Jasper, Hampton, Compelt. I do have put that plug in there, but we have the Moderna vaccine and then also Johnson and Johnson vaccine. Pfizer vaccine is at the hospital here locally. And like she said, also at like Walgreens, that's where we went, you know, for my son and then other pharmacies. I did want to make one point that the um, assistant Epi well, had today. If you are age 16 and above, you do not need parental consent to get the vaccine. That is not well known. But 16 and above, you can get the vaccine without preventable consent. If you're less than 16, so 12 to 15, have to have parental consent. The parent doesn't have to be there, but you have to have the form that the parent signed. So like your aunt could take you um, if your mom signed the form for you. So just wanted to make that clear. All right. Um, if everyone needs to get the vaccine and proof of it, one, we are not, no one is requiring proof of that. As of this time, um, there was a question that I had written down that I figured somebody would ask, and it's kind of along those lines. Um, will uh, the vaccine be required for travel, work, school, et cetera? We talked a little bit about school for next year. It is not at this time required. Um, work, um, there are private, privately owned businesses that at this time can require you to get the vaccine. Um, and then for travel in the United States, I would say no. But if you're wanting to travel internationally to another country, that may be required. Proof of vaccination might be required. Mr. Ferguson, I got a question sent to me, um, and I don't know how to answer this, so maybe Dr. Polkey. What would happen if you take a Pfizer vaccination? Can you get the second one be the Moderna? Or does it have to be the same? Okay. It should be the same because that's the way it was studied. If for some reason that happened, um, they, you know, you don't have to get, you know, say you got Pfizer the first time. If for some reason you got Moderna, you don't have to get another Pfizer. But it's not studied. So they don't know what the, 
efficacy is um, okay. at this point. So it's best to get the same one. Okay. Um, if we got our doses on the military bases through Naval Hospital, would we still be in that system where they can look up our vaccine? Yes. I would. Yes. Um, and we have come pretty much to the end of questions. There's some that I skipped over because they were um, uh, um, because they were repetitive a little bit. Um, we talked about the safety of even the J&J. &J. Somebody was asking about it. Um, for, first and foremost, these vaccines have been proven safe. That they do not cause harm. All right. Um, and we also know from science that these vaccines are very effective. Even more so than a flu vaccine at this time. All right. Um, so with that, we got a few minutes left. I did want to show a little video. We had a couple students that came in, um, uh, some HOSA students. This, uh, forum was brought to you by Well Branch HOSA, which is Health Occupation, or used to be Health Occupation Students of America. Now it's just known as HOSA Future Health Professionals. So if any of you are interested in uh, career in healthcare. This is a great club for you guys, and when, especially when we're back in person next year. Um, it is a good way to earn scholarships, compete in events, and it's just a very um, a, a great organization. Um, we had a couple students come uh, here to the school, and we videotaped them uh, with a with a short interview, um, and we're going to watch that now. Hi, my name is Tori White. I'm a sophomore here at Wellbridge Early College High School and I have both doses of the COVID vaccine. When I got the shot, I had very mild symptoms. All I had was soreness in the arm, which was very predictable. I got the vaccine because I am the baby girl of five and I'm the sickest one out of the five of us. And, but that's not the only reason I got it. I also got it to protect not only myself, but my family and friends. Hi, I'm Jakari Wright and I'm a senior and I received both doses of the COVID vaccine. After receiving the vaccine, I experienced mild symptoms, which was soreness at the injection site. I personally got the vaccine because I'm close with my grandparents. And as you know, the older you are, the more likely you are to experience severe symptoms. I also got it for my own well-being, because even though I'm young, you never know how your body will react to getting the virus. Also, the more people who get vaccinated, the quicker we'll go back to life as we knew it. Hi, I'm Josh Ferguson, and I'm a teacher here at Well Branch. These students came here today to show you what you can expect if you choose to get the COVID-19 vaccine and how they arrived at their own personal decision. The amazing local medical professionals came to the forum today to try and give you all the information you might need to make your own decision about the vaccine. Our goal was to provide information and hope. I know something that is this new can be scary, but we also know that the best way to combat that fear is with education. We ultimately aren't just doing this for ourselves. We are getting the vaccine to help protect our friends, loved ones, and all those here at Warrior Nation as well. Thank you. All right. Um, all right, so it's pretty much all the questions we have there. For you guys, thank thank you so much to the panel for making time. Thank you, Dr. Polke, for making time for us today to come and talk to us um, and educate us um, about this vaccine, guys. I know something that, like like I said in the video, I know something like this, something this new can be scary, but the science we got to trust the science. The science tells us it's safe. The science tells us it's available. The science tells us it works. And if we want to protect more than just ourselves, we need to get the vaccine. Um, it, it's, totally it's not always about us. It's about the community, about our loved ones, um, and keeping people here at Warrior Nation safe. We want to keep teachers safe. We want to keep kids safe. We want to keep their parents and grandparents safe. 
And so. I, I, I would just say one one last thing. That was part of the reason I got the vaccine. I was worried, y'all. I was I was like, I don't know. I like to have a lot of studies. I do. But I have to trust the science for one thing. Two, I know I need to do it for my family. I wasn't sure what was going to happen to me. I need to be here for my kids. You know, um, I want my kids to be here. <laughs> um, and in the end, I just had to kind of trust the science. I think, you know, kind of the takeaway you know, everybody talks about getting back to normal. I don't know what that looks like. But one thing, if you love to do certain things, my 10-year-old told me she wanted to get it because she wanted to go to Yo-Yo's to get her ice cream. But I won't let her go because I don't want her to touch all the handles. You know, so you got to find out your why, you know, <laughs> you got to find out your why and do that. Maybe it's you want to play sports and you don't want to be quarantined again next year. Maybe it's you want to go hang out with your friends and you don't want your mama nagging you because she's scared you going out there, you're going to get COVID. So you just got to figure out what your why is and, and go for it. But I appreciate being here today, y'all. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys so much for coming and being part of this. We really appreciate you guys. Stay safe, and we will see you guys tomorrow. Take care. Bye.